welcome you all today we are going to make distinctions between morpheme morph and the term allomorph this topic is from the subject english code 206 the structure of english this is our lecture number two we already have conducted lecture number one in the subject of morphology or the structure of english and the example is also given here but let's define more examples and have detail on each and every term in our lecture so let's begin here number one what is morpheme it is the smallest meaningful unit in a language a morpheme can't be divided without altering its meaning so in easier words morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit for example some words consist of one morpheme example kind Others are more than one. For example, the English word unkindness consists of three morphemes. The stem kind, the negative prefix un, and the noun forming suffix ne double s. So the word is unkindness, and this word actually made up of three morphemes kind, un, and ne double s. Thus, in this regard, we could say. Morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit, which may has a meaning or it may have a grammatical function. Here is another example. The English word kind is a morpheme. If the die is removed, it changes to kin, which has a different meaning. It means to say these are two different words and two different morphemes. So we have rendered here four examples like kind is a morpheme is a word because it, it is the smallest meaningful unit but kin is another morpheme and a word as well but the word unkindness is not a morpheme but this word consists upon three morphemes here is more detail about morpheme and morphemes can have grammatical functions for example in english the sa sa is also a morpheme in she talks is a grammatical morpheme which shows that the word is a third person singular present tense form so morphemes can have grammatical functions here now we are going to make distinction or define morph morph thus a morph can be defined as physical form representing some morpheme in a language means every morpheme which has physical form which is very distinctive. It is a recurrent distinctive sound phoneme or sequence of sounds phonemes. So distinctive even sound or its physical form because every sound has a physical form as well. So that is known as morph. For example, the word man is carrying one morph and one morpheme. So the word man is one morph because it has one physical form, man. And it is one morpheme as well because it has a singular meaning. But while the word man is carrying one morph because it has again one physical form and two morphemes because uh, this man is consists upon the word man, M-A-N, plus plural because uh, plurals, they have function. that Those are also known as morphemes because the form men can be divided, so it is actual form of the word means the morph. But this single form is carrying two different meanings. Men plus plural means the two morphemes. Here is another example. The word students is carrying two morphs. Two morphs because physically there is S in the word student or in the morpheme student. So these are two morphs because S is a morph physical form and a student, a student plus S, as well as these are two morphemes, student plus plural marker. Now, men, M-E-N, was having one morph because it, ha it had one physical form, but the word students, because it has two physical forms, a student plus S. So it consists upon two morphs and two morphemes as well because sa it is having grammatical function or meaning and student 
it is another morpheme. So two morphemes and two morphs. Here is something more in morph. Morphs are the actual shape or the realization of a morpheme. So actual shape or realization of a morpheme is known as a morph. They are defined as an element of a speech or writing that represents and expresses one or more morpheme. So all the morphemes, uh, whether they are uh, having speech means of phones uh, or they have uh, morphemes, those are known as morphs. Here is a linguist. Langan then defines morph as a specific pronunciation associated with a specific meaning such that the pronunciation cannot be broken down into meaningful parts. Those meanings combine to form the meaning of the whole. So all the pronunciation, all the sounds, those having meaning and they cannot be broken down into meaningful, other meaningful parts. Those are known as morph according to Langendon. Here is something more about the morph. For example, the word students, we already have carried this example, is carrying two morphs, student plus S as well as two morphemes, student plus plural marker. Thus a morph can be defined as physical form representing some morpheme in a language. It is a recurrent distinctive sound phoneme or sequence of sound phonemes. We already have done this. However, here is another point. A morpheme is an abstract notion because when there is found of any morpheme that is an abstract notion, certainly, and it is realized or represented by concrete or actual forms, which are called morphs. So this is some extra explanation of morph. Morphs are the phonological spoken are orthographic written forms to realize morphemes and they are minimal carriers of uh, meaning. So minimal uh, carriers of meanings having spoken or written forms are known as morph. Here I'm going to make another explanation of the third term and that is allomorph. In other words, it is an alternative pronunciation of a morpheme. So morpheme may have an alternative pronunciation in a particular context. There are variations in the pronunciations of these forms. So the variations of morphemes are known as allomorphs. For example, the word cats is pronounced with s, but dogs is pronounced with z. So same morpheme s in cats it is having the pronunciation sa but in the word dog sa is pronounced as za the same sa in the word boxes is pronounced as is so the so same morpheme sa is differently or it is having variation in the pronunciation sa za is that is known as allomorph these are allomorphs of the same morpheme, sa. They have different sounds, but they have the same meaning. Here is something more, and now it is a distinction of morph, morpheme, and allomorph together. A morpheme is an abstract concept in linguistics, which must be realized as certain phonetic forms or variations or variants in different phonetic environments. So a morpheme is an abstract concept in linguistics, which is having a phonetic form or variants in different phonetic environments, mean to say variation in pronunciation, but morpheme is actually an abstract concept in linguistics. Each of the phonetic forms or variants in is called a morph mean to say each of a phonetic form or each of the phonetic variation, it is having a physical um, form that is known as a morph. The different morphs which represent or realize the same morpheme are called morphs of that morpheme. For example, wood is a morpheme because it is having 
an abstract meaning, right? But word could be pronounced differently. Now, these different pronunciation uh, are having different uh, shapes, are physical forms like wood, 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 da. It is having different physical forms are known as morph, but all these morphs together are variations of pronunciations are known as allomorph. Here I have made the distinction of morph, morpheme and allomorph together and the relationship between the term morph, allomorph and morpheme is similar to that between phone, allophone and phoneme. So those students who are still confused, you may Follow the link given into my description box about the differences of a phone, allophone, and phoneme already. And the same differences as in the pronunciation, having the same or alternative understanding of morph, allomorph, and morpheme. The term morph means shape. Any minimal phonetic form that has meaning is a morph. So this is all about the distinctions of morph, allomorph, or morpheme. Thanks for attention. Thank you very much. Hopefully this would have been very helping for all of you. Thank you.